Well, for this lecture, we're going to talk a little bit about the case of Terry versus Ohio. You know, there's an interesting uh, comparison here, and that is that, yes, Mapp versus Ohio is from Ohio, and Terry versus Ohio is from Ohio, and in addition, uh, they're both in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, so it is rather interesting, but beyond that, basically, there's no real similarity between these two cases. MAP was all about the castle defense, the ability to defend your home against intrusion by the police. Uh, this goes way back in time to when the troops wanted to quarter. Uh, the British troops were going to quarter in um, colonial Americans' homes, and so as part of the Bill of Rights, they added a section that no official can get in your home without uh, some type of court order. Uh, we call it a search warrant generally. Well Terry's totally different. Terry has more to do with the person, the individual, walking on a sidewalk on a hot day in the middle of Cleveland. Here again it's an old old case uh, but he's wearing a raincoat in the middle of summertime uh, and a police officer acted on a hunch. And the question is, you know, uh, just how far can police go in investigating cases? Uh, and then the next part is what we call the pat-down search. And so the police officer maintained that he could pat uh, Mr. Terry down uh, to make sure he didn't have any weapons. Well, you know what that's going to tell you. Is he patted Mr. Terry down and found a sawed-off shotgun. Terry had been walking around outside this store and sweating and hot and just looked suspicious to the police officer. I think he had 14 or 15 years of experience. So you can see that this is very different than the MAP case, if you remember in the MAP case. So they forced their way in her home. They searched for things they weren't even looking for. Whereas in the Terry case, he's really just trying to find out what this guy's up to. And then also, because he is wearing this heavy coat in the summer, he had a certain suspicion, what they call now a reasonable suspicion. Uh, may not rise to the level of probable cause, but at least he could check the guy, see what he's doing hanging around, and did he have any weapons. Well, he found the weapons, and sure enough, the guy was getting ready to rob this store. Some people have argued over the years that he'd been better off just to lay back and wait for the guy to go in and rob the store. Then he might get a better case because... In Ohio, that would be one degree less of crime if uh, he was caught for attempted robbery instead of robbery. Now, in other states like Indiana, that doesn't matter. And I think this is part of the reason is that there, if you foil a crime before it happens, the person's still going to be guilty of the same crime, even though it's an attempt. And so in this case, he was able to prevent any harm to the cashier or anyone in the store and he was able to catch the guy, but as we know now in Ohio, it would have meant that he got uh, probably a B felony instead of an A felony. So there's a big difference between 20 and 50 years, uh, and uh, so that's what we're talking about. So, uh, you know, just looking at this thing then, uh, Mr. Terry had a lesser position of uh, rights under the 4th, 5th, 6th, 8th and 14th Amendment uh, because he was the individual. He's walking around. He was acting suspicious. Uh, whereas if a person is in a home, we now know that because of MAP, generally speaking, uh, police can't just force their way in into someone's home without um, something more than just wanting to go in and look around. So that's a big difference between uh, Map and Terry. And remember to look to when you get a chance at Terry versus Ohio and the proper citation that I'm going to add. I'm going to have an additional PowerPoint every week. It's very simple, just a couple PowerPoints of my own. I'm going to add the proper citation, handwritten, for each one of these cases. So uh, take some time. I want you to, of course, brief Terry. That's an important case and then shepherdize and brief uh, follow-up case that you find. Uh, I'd like you to find a case that distinguished Terry, but it's pretty unlikely. Just about all courts follow Terry, so you're probably going to find a case that followed Terry. But either way, I'm always happy 
if you find the opposite of what I'm looking for. Either one's good. I think they're both interesting. So hey, look at this. Read up on it. Uh, respond to your uh, forum posts. And let's just keep this ball rolling. Okay, talk to you next time.